We start this 4 o'clock hour. Baylor assistant basketball coach Bill Peterson, our guest speaker last night at the Academic All-Stars Banquet, and also some nuggets from him on Jimmy Butler and more. Bill, thanks for your time. Paul Craig and Smokey, first of all, I want to thank you. As Paul mentioned to you when he picked up the phone for last night, you uh, – you had everybody at attention. You did not have a microphone. You didn't have like a wireless mic. And that room with 125 or 30 people, you could hear a pin drop. Thanks, Smoke. Uh, I enjoyed uh, speaking at your event. It's, uh, it's always awesome to see so many young elite student athletes. That uh, It was really neat for me to hear where all they're going and all the accomplishments they've had in high school. And, you know, you had – some kids there from really small town schools you had big high schools you had a kid from midway i think you said they had over maybe five thousand kids in, in in their class and it was just neat to see how many kids from different backgrounds and you had about every sport sport covered too so it was really a great honor to speak when did you start from maybe what you might tell a team in a locker room or in a meeting room to what you now can do as a public speaker. How did it, it was that a transition? Is that something that came easy to you? Um, it, it was. Uh, it started when I was in uh, when I was in uh, college, and uh, I, I wanted to be a college coach, and so I um, I traveled around in the summer, and uh, one summer I got this crazy idea. I mean, I, I was I was a nobody. I mean, I was just a little kid that played high school basketball in Florida. I played junior college for two years. My second year, I led the state of Florida in assists, but I wasn't very big, and I got a scholarship to a small division two. And one summer, I said, you know, I want to coach in college, and eventually I want to, you know, play in the pros, which I knew that wasn't probably going to happen. But I had a dream to coach in the NBA one day. And so I traveled around. I wrote letters to all these people way before cell phones, and uh, I'll come speak at your camp, and I'd tell them I'll do it for nothing. And I would get in my car and drive over the, all over the southeast United States. And uh, one summer, I, I worked at 12 weeks in a row, essentially all summer. And I'd work their basketball camp, and then I'd speak. I'd give a motivational talk, and I'd do some ball hill and drills, and I'd jump rope. And, you know, I had really some cool experiences. I spoke at Notre Dame. Uh, I, I wrote one of the assistants, and he had me come. I got to meet Digger Phelps. And then uh, I spoke uh, one summer at um, Tennessee mm -hmm. for uh, the women's team and got to meet Pat Head Summit. And uh, she was even gracious enough to take me to lunch. And it was really cool that uh, I guess she was great as she could be and very kind and generous. Spent about an hour and a half with me. And I was just a young, young kid just getting out of college at that time. So uh, that's how it kind of started. And then once I got into coaching, it kind of evolved into – you know, trying to do it for teams and, and to help individuals as groups uh, be very successful at what they're doing. Is that is that where you kind of found your niche as you went through and you know, player development and, and different things? Is that, you know, and you've done a lot, you've had a lot of different jobs in coaching, but that's that's where you are now. Is that is that your fastball? Yeah, that, that's, uh, that's what I kind of developed into. When I always loved working with guys individually and in small groups. And, uh, you know, when I was a player, I spent hours and hours and hours by myself. And I wasn't very big, but I was really quick and I could really handle the ball. And I made myself into a player, so I got a scholarship. And I would tell kids when I travel around the country, you know, if you do these drills every day for 20 or 30 minutes, and uh, you don't get a college scholarship, uh, I would tell them when I was in Kentucky, I'll, I'll pay for half your uh, scholarship. I'll get you uh, an education. I'll, I'll help you get a scholarship somewhere. And I actually had a kid, and when I spoke at Murray State in Kentucky, about 400 kids, and I gave the talk, and uh, his parents wrote me and said, I just want you to know my son's not very big. He's about 5'8", was going to be a senior. He did your drills and jumped that rope every single day of his Sundays. I told him to take the Lord's Day off, and uh, he got a scholarship to a junior college in uh, in Kentucky, and nobody ever thought he could, and uh, so I would travel around tell people that, and I started to realize, you know, I can help people get better, and I can help guys realize their dreams, and, and when I went to Colorado State, we had some pretty good players, and uh, I got really involved with a kid named Jason Smith, who was a big kid we had, and helped him become a pro, and uh, he played 11 years in the NBA, was drafted by the Sixers, played for New Orleans and Washington, and uh uh, a friend of mine was with the Bucks, and he kind of knew the past. And uh, they had a coaching change, and um, 
Uh, he said, look, we need a new player development guy. And uh, the GM, Larry Harris, brought me into the Bucks, And that kind of jump-started uh, my tenure in the NBA as a player development coach. And, uh, you know, just helping guys to understand that we can carve a niche or roll out for you. You can make a whole lot of money because everybody can't be shooting the ball all the time. Bill, part of the staff, Scott Drew's staff that won the national championship a couple of years ago has been at Baylor. I think this is your seventh season. Yeah, um, yeah starting my seventh year. Fifth is the special assistant to the head coach. You've been a part of the NBA with Orlando, uh, the Bucks, as you mentioned, Golden State, and, of course, Dirk Nowitzki, Steve Nash, and others with the Mavericks. But as we were sitting there last night, uh, Jimmy Butler's having a pretty good run right now for the Miami Heat. They won again last night. So when was the first time Jimmy Butler became a part of uh, on your radar? Because I covered his games while broadcasting Tyler Junior College. Yeah, I thought that was pretty neat, Smoke. You were telling me that last night because uh, uh, a long time ago in my career, I was an assistant at McNeese State, and I would go through Tyler to recruit. I'd go to Tyler and Trinity Valley and Kilgore, and uh, there was an older coach there named Roy Thomas, who you yep. know well, and actually coached one of the guys to, he coached in the NBA. He had a guard named Robert Pack mm -hmm. that played at USC and eventually played in the NBA. And uh, uh, he eventually played for the Mavs when I was with the Mavs. One season he was with us and uh, spent some time with him there. But uh, um, that was kind of the time. I, I kind of I knew of Jimmy Butler a little bit. I knew he played at Tyler, but I didn't know really who he was, much about it. And I was with the Bucks then, and uh, Buzz Williams was the head coach and one of his assistants, Dale Lair was one of my best friends. I worked for Dale at Colorado State, and um, I would go over when Buzz got the job. He would have me come over and work, uh, speak at his camp. He'd ask me to come over um, during the summer and speak at his kids' camp. So I'd come over there, and then after camp, he'd haul me in the back gym and say, hey, we got this kid here named Jimmy Butler. Will you work him out a little bit? So I took him in the back gym and worked him out 20, 30, 40 minutes, and then I came back the next week and did it again, and then I did it again. And the one thing I didn't know he'd be as good a pro as he is, but the one thing that always struck at me when I worked him out, when I had him do something, there was no no uh, second gear. There was no slow. It was all intensity, and it was all business, and that was when he was, you know, like a junior in college. He, he'd just come from Tyler to Marquette. And at that time, I could tell even then, he had an edge to him. And I didn't know how big an edge that would, would be, <laughs> but uh, obviously it's a huge edge, and, and that's why he's a great player. Because he doesn't, he doesn't settle. You know, people tell him you can't do this and you can't do that. You know, he wasn't a high draft pick. I think he was thirty or thirty-one for the Bulls. And then, you know, everybody kept telling him, oh, "You can't do this. You're not good enough." But he doesn't accept that. He's just outworked people, and he's one of those guys. He's got a chip smoke, and it's uh, when the playoffs come, he raises even to a higher level. And obviously, you saw that last night. You said something interesting last night, kind of in passing in your speech about Dirk, in that you said, you know, you didn't teach him how to shoot or anything, but you taught him how to balance his checkbook. And <laughs> live. But those are things, it, it's kind of funny, I guess people don't think about that because you think about a guy going to the NBA, they want to get him in the weight room, they want to make sure he's eating right, they want to make sure that he's, he's holding those skills for the court, but if his personal life is kind of messy, then usually his professional life is kind of messy. So those are important things I think that people don't even think about that NBA coaches li like you when you were there have to, to help young guys, especially coming over to a new country, figure out. Very much so. I, I tell a story all the time about Dirk, uh, and I would tell everybody in your audience or anybody that has kids, uh, say you have a son and he's 18 years old and you get him a job in Germany. He gets a job in Germany. He doesn't speak German. You fly over with him. You get in an apartment, you and your, your wife, and then uh, you make sure he's got some furniture and a bed, and you leave. You leave after a week and a half, and now he's on his own, okay? And he's on his own to th survive in that environment. He's never lived there, all right? He's maybe been there once and visited. He doesn't have a building support network, any of that kind of stuff. And when Dirk was in, um, was in Dallas, uh, and one of the reasons Donnie Nelson hired me, he said, you know, you worked a lot with college guys. This kid's 18. We just drafted from Germany. I've seen you work. I coached Donnie Nelson a long time ago on an AI tour. And Donnie was really smart. He said, I need somebody that, that uh, likes to be around young guys, but he's not a young guy that will take care of this guy and to help him when he goes through tough times. And I'd go back and shoot with him at night. And, you know, we went to the grocery store one night, and he had no idea how to write a check. 
He said, Coach P, I don't know what to do. So I showed him how to write a check. And then a couple of weeks later, he bought a, he bought a, uh, um, a chair. And uh, probably a month later, like a recliner chair. I'll never forget him coming to me. He didn't have very good practice. And after practice, we were shooting. I said, Derek, what's, what's the matter? He said, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm not at home. I must get this chair. This furniture store told me I had to be there at 4 o'clock or I would not get the chair. I must be there. I said, whoa, whoa, Dirk, you tell them when to come, okay? <laughs> you paid the money. It, it doesn't work like that, okay? And he said, but they told me, Coach. I said, no, it doesn't work like that in this country. So I went in and got him a phone. We got on the phone, called the store, and said, you guys will deliver the chair tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock or you keep the money, okay? And obviously, Dirk was, oh, I'm so relieved. That morning, he got the chair. He came to practice. He was bouncing around going, oh, coach, coach, so much better, coach. You know, and he, he was a great person. And, you know, obviously, him and Steve Nash together were a great duo and really great human beings to be around. I would like to know the furniture store that did that, that is now <laughs> after he is maybe the most beloved athlete in Dallas, or he's <laughs> one of them. He's, I in, mean, that he's in that conversation yeah. of the most beloved yes. athlete in Dallas, which yes. furniture company tried to take <laughs> Dirk for a ride. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can't remember which one it was, but that, that guy, he was so generous and so, so gracious to people. And, you know, I, I just saw him, I don't know, the last year he played, uh, I went up and went to a game. A couple of Keith Grant, who was a yep, assistant yep. general manager for a long time, was a good friend. And Alvius Pazdrasis was a scout who played for me in college. Anyway, I went to a game, and after the game, I see Alvius, and he says, "You want to come see Dirk?" And uh, I said, "Sure." So I go back in the training room. And I haven't seen the guy probably in four or five years because I haven't been in the NBA. I, I've been at Baylor, and so I walk in the training room. He's sitting on the table after the game. He's got ice on both knees. And he's eating a plate of food. And I walked in the room and he jumped up and he screamed, Billy P, Billy P. And he gave me a big hug. And it was like I'd seen him yesterday. Mm. And uh, that's the kind of gracious uh, human being he was. And, you know, anywhere you visit with him, never I'm better than you. Never, you know, who I am. You know, very humble and down to earth. And I'm not one at all to ask for autographs. I mean, it was my job and it was business. But he autographed a picture for me of his 30,000 points that he scored against the Lakers. And I put it on a plaque in my wall, on my wall, in my office. And he was just a tremendous human being. And I can understand why he's one of the most beloved athletes because of how he treats people every day. I ask every one of the student athletes, athletes, the recipients, because some are 10 minutes away and some live an hour and 20 minutes away to text me like, like their mother. Hey, when you get home, make sure, you know, let me know. So I know everyone's fine. And throughout the night, the text messages come and all of them made sure they mentioned uh, Coach Peterson and also your speech and how much it, it grabbed them and, and caught their attention. I know you can't get too much into the Baylor roster because it's fluid, but how much work is going on right now? How different is it with the transfer portal, the NIL, the NBA draft because some are eligible? How much, how hard is it right now? Very, very, very different. You know, Scott done a great job adjusting and adapting and and that's really important because the landscape has changed in college basketball with the portal and kids transfer not sitting out and then with nil and then on top of it because of the level where our program is you know the, the, we have nine guys on our roster but uh you know i can't share names and stuff but essentially we're recruiting like four guys that are playing right now on tv all right it's the chicago combine because they're in the nba draft and if they don't go back to their um, uh, school, you know, a couple of them are in the portal. And then, obviously, we have our own guy, Adam Flagler, that's playing in the games today. And, you know, he, he's, he's got an opportunity to come back or he'll stay in the lead, uh, NBA draft and go ahead. And, and that deadline is May 31. So um, you have to continue to recruit guys like that. And our roster is not finished. You know, it is very fluid and very moving. And we're working right now on that uh, every day. And, uh you know, it's very, very different because you know, a lot of the guys that we're working on have just played this weekend in the elite G League camp, and then they're playing right now in the uh, NBA Combine. So it's just a part of the way um, college basketball has changed, and you have to adapt to it. Bill, uh, inspirational, uh, motivating, uh, unbelievable job last night. We appreciate your storytelling. Can't wait to, to hear you uh, at another engagement at some point, whenever that is. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for sharing the stories that you shared because some of them, all of them, 
in, in a lot of different ways were just incredible. Thank you very much, folks. Thanks for having me on. And uh, Paul, great to talk with you last night. Congrats on your uh, upcoming wedding. Oh, thank and you, Coach. Thank okay. you. Bill Peterson, right. Baylor assistant coach, assistant to the head coach, and Scott Drew with us. He was.